Today's lesson on solving square roots is going to be a really important one, so just make sure that you're taking good notes on this one, and that if you didn't understand something, go back, watch it again, uh, practice the problems I give you. Um, you're going to be using this quite a bit throughout the rest of this year, and if you take college algebra, quite a bit there, especially trigonometry. So let's start with just kind of a little bit of a review. If you remember, when you have 3 squared, so that means that you're going to take 3 times 3, which gives you 9. Now, if you have negative 3 squared, because that negative is inside the parentheses, you're going to take negative 3 times negative 3, and two negatives multiply to give you a positive 9. So when we look down here at what is the square root of 9, remember the definition of a square root is what number times itself gives you 9. And so what number times itself gives you 9? Well, most people holler out at me at this point in class, 3. But then don't forget about that example right there. Negative 3 also gives you a positive 9. So the square root of 9 is really plus or minus 3. Now, of course, I'm going to throw a little wrench in that. Um, if I, typically, if you only see the square root of 9, as you see here, typically you're just going to answer a positive 3. And we're going to talk later about when do you answer the plus or minus 3. For now, let's just focus on the positive 3, unless I indicate otherwise that I want a negative or I want plus or minus. So now, this next thing, typically in class, what I'd have you do is get out your calculators, and I'd have you find the square root of 36 on your calculator. And I know you guys know the answer to that. That's just 6. But then I want to look over here at this, the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. And so 2 times 3 is 6. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but 4 times 9 is 36. So what we're looking at is, if I have the square root of a big number, but I split that in the square root of two smaller numbers that multiply to give me that bigger number, do I get the same answer? So far, the answer is yes. Is that true? Let's keep looking. So the next one is the square root of 8. Now, that one, I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, I have a calculator. Hold on. So square root of 8. If you have a calculator, go ahead and hit it. Square root of 8. Don't hit the calculator, hit the square root of 8, and see what you get. So I hit the square root of 8 on my calculator, and I get 2.828 and so on. It actually keeps on going, because if you remember, the square root of 8 is irrational, and so it's going to go on and on without repeating. Now the square root of 4, that's 2, by the way. And the square root of 2 is 1.414. And if I take that times 2, I get 2.828. Hey, that seems familiar. Now again, check 4 times 2 is 8. So, so far it's working. Let's try another one. Let's try 30. So the square root of 30 on my calculator, it says the square root of 30 is 5.477. And then on my calculator, it says the square root of 3 is 1.73. And the square root of 10 is 3.16. And when I take that times 1.73, I get 5.47. Again, 3 and 10 make 30, which is what we had over there. And they come out to the same thing. So here's what it means. And this is what you should write in your notes. I'll say that again. Write this in your notes. That if you have square root of a times b. You can split that up in the square root of a and the square root of b, and you can do those square roots separately. It's really quite cool. It's actually going to help us quite a bit. And so here's where we apply that. If you look down here, the square root of 8, I'm going to try and simplify it. You know when we have a fraction, and you have a fraction that's 2 fourths, and you know I'm not going to be okay with that. You know I'm going to say, hey, you need to reduce that, and so you go, oh, 2 goes to 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice. Well, that's what I'm going to do with square roots now. If I see the square root of 8, in 8 you have the number 4, which you can square root 4. It's a perfect square. So what we're going to do then is we're going to split it up. We're going to say, I want it now to be the square root of 4 and the square root of 2, because I can square root the 4. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 2 is, well, I don't know that one, so it's the square root of 2. 
So now it's reduced. The square root of 8 is now written as 2 square roots of 2. And that should be what you reduce it to. And I want that to become comfortable. I want it to become as comfortable as saying that 2 fourths equals 1 half. I want you to be happy with that. I don't, however, want you to give me 2.8. Because I don't want you using your calculators. When you write 2.8, you have now cut it off. You have now, um, I can't think of the word. You've rounded it. You've now rounded it, and it is no longer the square root of 8. It is now a rounded version of that, and that's not okay. The same thing goes for dividing. If you look here, I have the square root of 4 ninths. Okay? You can split that up into the square root of 4 on top and the square root of 9 on bottom, which is nice because then you get 2 thirds. Now, if you actually put the square root of 4 ninths in your calculator, I'm pretty sure you'd get 0.6 repeating, which, if you don't know, is the same thing as 2 thirds. Same thing goes down here, square root of 25 over 2. I can split that up in the square root of 25, which is 5, over the square root of 2. Now we're going to talk in a little bit, what do you do about this, because this isn't okay. But let's just keep on going with what you're writing down in your notes. In your notes, you need to be writing this. When you have the square root of a fraction, you can split up in the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom, and that's a really handy thing to be able to do. Okay, so make sure you write that in your notes. So, a big thing that we're going to be doing here is we're going to be simplifying square roots. So write these three rules down. You have three rules. You have number one, take out, oops, take out all perfect squares. So remember that four that was in the eight? We need to check for all of those, and we need to get them all out. That's our rule number one. That's the first thing we look at in a problem. Can I take out any perfect squares? Rule number two, no square roots in the denominator. That's a no-no. You cannot have a square root in the denominator. Later on, we're going to see it get even worse. But for right now, you just need to worry. If there's a square root in the bottom, we need to take care of that. We'll, we'll learn how to do that in a little bit. And then the third rule also has to do with fractions. You can't have fractions in the square root. So remember how we had four ninths? We couldn't have that. We had to simplify that. And so if it doesn't turn out like the four ninths, uh, where you can square root both things. If it turns out more like that 25 over 2, and remember that 2 we couldn't square root, then I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit. But make sure you get these three rules written down. Now let's look at our first example here, the square root of 24. The square root of 24, oh, let me get a different color here. The square root of 24, so I need to think about all the things that multiply to give me 24, like 1 and 24, but you know what, that's not good because I don't have any perfect squares in there. Then I've got 2 and 12. 2 and 12, neither of those are perfect squares. So then what do we got? 3 and 8, neither of those are perfect squares. Then 4 and 6, and ooh, ooh, 4. 4 is a perfect square. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4 times 6. Now here's what you do next. Remember how we can split it up? Square root of 4, separate from the square root of 6. They're still being multiplied because it's 4 times 6 inside, so it's going to be four, square root of 4 times the square root of 6. And the square root of 4 is 2. It's just a 2. No more square root. We used it and then the square root of 6. Now 6 is 2 times 3, and that's all I can do with 6, and none of those are perfect squares, so 2 square roots of 6 is my answer. Now you'll see the next one has 2 square roots being multiplied. Now the 6 is not a perfect square, and 15 is not a perfect square. So I think what I'm going to try and do is let's put them together and see what happens. So I put it together, and I have 6 times 15 inside the square root. And let's see here, on my trusted calculator, I've got 6 times 15. That gives me 90, the square root of 90. So now I'm looking at 90, thinking there is definitely a perfect square in there. And if you haven't seen it yet, that perfect square is 9. So I write it as the square root of 9 times 10. And then I say, all right, I can split it up, square root of 9, square root of 10. And then I say, what's the square root of 9? It's 3, square root of 10. And that's my answer. 10 is just 2 times 5. I can't square root those things. So 3 square roots of 10 is my answer. Now look at this next one. This next one is actually really cool because this next one is pretty simplified. I've got a fraction of the square root. That, that breaks rule number 3. And so I'm going to split it up in the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. On the square root of the top, I've got the square root of 7. On the bottom, the square root of 16 is 4. And now if I go through my rules, rule number one was I need to simplify anything inside the square root, meaning I need to take out any perfect squares. Well, seven's a prime number. There's no perfect square in there. Then I can't have any square roots in the bottom. Four doesn't have a square root, so I'm good. And I can't have a fraction in the square root. And the only thing in the square root is a seven, so that's not a fraction. So this is actually my answer. I'm done with this one. Now, 
Here's the time where we learn. Score to seven over two. There's a problem here. It's breaking rule number three, I think, where we have a fraction inside the square root. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna split it up. I've got the square root of seven on top, the square root of two on bottom. Unfortunately, though, you'll notice on the bottom, square root of two doesn't have a square root. So now I need to do something about this because I can't leave it like this. It's breaking rules. So now I have to figure out how am I gonna get rid of the square root of two? And here's the trick. Multiply it times itself. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 2. But to be legal, remember, you need to multiply top and bottom by the same thing. So now what happens is on top, I've got the square root of 14, because 7 times 2 is 14. On the bottom, I've got the square root of 4. And here's what's cool. Because I used the exact same number over again, 2 and 2, it gave me a number that I can actually square root now. The square root of 4 is 2. On top, I still have the square root of 14. Square root of 14, well, that's going to be 2 times 7. I can't split that up anymore. And so all my rules are covered. I am now done with this problem. What we just did, when we took and we multiplied by itself, we took that square root of 2. We used that square root of 2 there because this had a square root of 2. And so when we did that, we call that rationalizing. That is the term for that. That's our verb. Okay. So if I tell you to rationalize, what I'm saying is multiply by the same thing that's already on the bottom so that it cancels out. It will always cancel out that way. So now it's time to try a few problems. I'm just going to talk you through these. You know, it's a really good idea to just hit pause and try these four problems on your own and see what you can do. But I'll start with the 500. Now, on the 500, I'm looking for perfect squares. And so let's see here. Um, there's all kinds of ways I can go. I'm actually going to go a really slow way just because this will happen to you sometimes and I want you to see what to do. So 500, I think of 50 and I think that the 25 can go into that. And 25 is a perfect square, so I'm thinking, hey, this is a good route. And so if I take 500 divided by 25, oops, 25, I get 20. So I'm going to split that up into 25 times 20. And so now I have uh, the square root of 25 times the square root of 20. And the square root of 25 is 5, so I've got 5 squares of 20. So I think, hey, I'm done. But 20 has a perfect square in it. I actually didn't use my biggest perfect square. And so what I have to do now is I have to analyze 20 and break that down. Remember, though, this is all multiplication. So if I look at this, this is all multiplication. So anything I do will still be multiplication. That will help us in a second. So now 20 is 4 times 5. And I can square root 4, so this will help me. So now I have 5. I have the square root of 4, and I have the square root of 5. So I replace 20 with 4 and 5. If it's okay with you, I've already actually split it up into my square roots. And I still have my 5. The square root of 4 is 2. And remember, this is all multiplying. So now I'm going to have 5 times 2, and then I have the square root of 5. So 5 times 2 is 10. I've got 10 square roots of 5. And that's my answer. Now, some of you may have said, Strom, that was dumb, because you could have gone faster. I sure could have. If I go back up to the square root of 500, 500 is 5 times 100. And last time I checked, I can square root 100. So that would be the square root of 100 times the square root of 5. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 5. I still get the same answer. It just took less work. Um, either way, you should be able to get there. All right, let's go to the next problem. Uh, let's do this 3 square roots of 12, square roots of 6. See, 12 and 6, I can't square root. And since I have two square roots going on here, I'm just going to multiply them together, and that might help me out. So 12 times 6 is 72. And now I'm looking at 72, and I'm trying to find a perfect square in 72. And if I take that and divide it by, oh gosh, 9, I get 9 times 8. But do you remember 8? Eight? 8 had a perfect square in there. So 72 must have a bigger square root. Now, if you want to go with 9 and 8, great, and then break down the 8 later. I'm actually going to try and get a better one. So let's see here. How about 72 divided by, pick a perfect square and try it out. So 9, there's going to be something bigger. So the next one would be 16. And if I take it and divide it by 16, I get a decimal. So that's not going to work. And then 72 divided by 25, that's the next one. Oh, that's definitely not going to work. And then 72 divided by 36, that's 2. So we have 36 times 2. So I'm going to split that up. I've got 3 times the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. So we've got 3, the 36 is 6, and then square root of 2. Remember, this is all multiplying, so I've, now I have 3 times 6. That gives me 18 square roots of 2, and that would be my answer. All right, let's check out these fractions down here. Now, 25 square root over this 3, all in the square root here. I'm already breaking a rule of fraction in the square root, so I split it up. Square root of 25 on top, square root of 3 on bottom. Now, square root of 25 is 5. 
over the square root of 3. Okay, now I have another problem. Now I'm breaking rule number 2 where I have the square root in a denominator. So remember that word rationalizing. I'm going to now rationalize, which means I need to multiply by itself. So I get the square root of 3 on top and bottom. So now on top I have 5 square roots of 3. On bottom, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. Can I tell you a trick here? 3 times 3 is 9. So now I've got the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. See, what's going to happen is it's always going to be whatever number is inside the square root. It's always going to be your answer. If I had the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, my answer is 5. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2, my answer is 2. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with that, go ahead and multiply them together. You get the square root of 25, and then the square root of 25 is 5. But it is a trick that you can use. And here's my answer. Now, my next one... Oh, gosh. Okay, my next one is a fraction. I'm going to split it up, square root of 2 on top, square root of 11 on bottom. And I need to rationalize because neither of these can be square rooted, but I can't leave the square root in the bottom. So I multiply by square root 11. I really don't care that I have a square root of 2 on top. You can leave square roots on the top. Now on top, I get square root of 2 times the square root of 11. That's square root of 22. On bottom, I get 11. Remember, it's whatever number's inside. And now I'm done because 22 is just 2 times 11. There's nothing else to it. And so this would be my answer. All right, two more examples, and then I'm going to be done talking to you, and you can be done with this video. I have the square root of 6 and the square root of 8. I'm going to put those together. Remember how I told you that? If you have two square roots, put them together. 6 times 8, I think, is 48. It would be embarrassing if it's not. Um, let's see, 48. Let's see, I need to think of things that multiply to give me 48. For example, 4 times 12 gives me 48. But I'm, I know I can square root 4, but see, 12 also has a 4 in it. And so I'd have to do it again. So I'm trying to think of something else. And so, let's see, I could just get on the calculator and start dividing by perfect squares, but I'm pretty sure 16 times 3 gives me 48. So I'm going to split that up into 16 times 3. So I've got the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. We've got 4 square roots of 3, and that's my answer. My last one here, I've got a fraction. I split it up, square root of 49 over the square root of 5. The square root of 49 is 7 over the square root of 5. And not done, because I have the square root of 5 on the bottom. So I need to rationalize. Multiply top and bottom of the square root of 5. So we get 7 square root of 5 over 20. No, not 25. Don't do that. Don't say 25, because that's not what it is. It, if you want to say the square root of 25, that'd be fine. But the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is just 5. Now, I want to point something out before I'm done here. These do not cancel. This is not really a 5. That is inside the square root. That is really the square root of 5. And the square root of 5 is really 2.23. It is not 5, so these do not cancel out. Do not cancel those out. They are not the same thing. Square root of 5 is 2.23, and 5 is just 5. All right, there you go. All done.